Hey everyone, today I'm going to work on my little Jemisu CNC engraver some more. Fix it up a bit and show you some software options. My CNC videos are more about me learning and showing you what I've learned. So please be patient, it will take a few videos before I'm able to make something useful. So with 3D printers, we have to worry about making sure the printed object sticks to the print bed. Well, the CNC version of that is work holding all the different ways to hold an object while the tool cuts it. What you use for work holding depends on what you're machining. I have this resin tooling box. They're a bit like wood, but they are pretty cheap and pretty consistent in size. So good to practice engraving on. I can make a lot of mistakes and just swap another block in. I have a few options for holding it. Let's take a look. I bought this mice online, so let's try this one first. were smaller it would be perfect but now it's sitting on the top and we just it's not right because the cutting head is to lower this one well I will save this for something else so let's try on this one instead This one is better, but it can only engrave in the center. None of these are quite white. So I'm going to 3D print something. 3D printers are great shop tools for making parts like this. Okay, I'm in Tinkercad. I still use it for most of my 3D printing because it's just simple and quick. I have this bracket from my Barbot project. It lets me attach a drag drink to a stepper motor. I'm just going to remix it a bit so that I can do the same thing for the CNC engraver. Okay, now that should work. I exported that and now I will mix it again. I just want to use those screws to make some kind of holding fixture. This is how I do almost everything. I have a few basic screws and nuts and just remix some very simple designs around them in Tinkercad. I almost never have to design anything from scratch anymore. Right now, I am going to slice this in Simplify 3D and print it on my Creality 3D CR10S Pro. It's my favorite printer these days and would be my top recommendation even if they were not my sponsor. The link is in the description box.
This is Desproto. It's a CAM or computer aided manufacturing program. It does the same job as a slicer does for a 3D printer. It looks at the shape and then figures out the path the cutting head will have to take in order to make it. Its output called GCO. It's just a bunch of XYZ coordinates that the cutting head moves between. There's different software to do this, but a lot of it is either super professional with a steep learning curve or in the cloud. I like my tools in my workshop, not someone else's, even if those tools are digital. A tool in the cloud is like borrowing a tool from a neighbor. You never know when they will move and you lose access to it. I rather have my own tools if I can, but everyone is different and you'll find lots of video on YouTube of people showing all kinds of different camp software. For now, this proto is simple and really saved me a lot of time getting up to speed. It is a Windows program. I haven't gotten a chance to see if it can run on Linux with Wine. With CAD and CAM software, there are a few Linux options, but none of them are super easy to learn, so that's going to be a project for another day. The free version of the Desproto software will handle everything I'm going to do here, and most hobby level CAM tasks. Okay, let's get to it. First, I need to select my machine. So I'm going to go up to options, library of machines, and select the Sync Smart Jamisu. Everything is okay there. I am going to select Gerbo Arduino Millimeter as the post processor. Now I'm going to load geometry files. See, I have this STL of two piggies. It's for 2019, the year of the pig in China. I want to engrave this into that pink resin block. So first I go to part parameters, the transform tab, scale, dimensions, millimeters, and set the y axis to um, 100 millimeters. Since our block of material is about 105 millimeters, and I want it to be a bit more, a bit smaller. Then I go to the materials tab, custom, set graphically. X is going to be um, minus, minus 5 to 110 millimeters. And the same for Y, so And the same for Y, so it clears the whole block, hopefully. And I'm going to leave all the other tabs set on their default. Close that up and look at geometry op operation. First thing I have to set, uh, first thing I have to set the right cutter, the spinny thing that takes away material. The ones that come with the Jemisu are conical with a 20 degree angle tip. I don't actually know if that's the right cutter for what I'm doing, but that's what I've got, so that's what I'll use. Now, I've done a few cutting passes already, so I have some important information. That's the feed rate, how fast the cutter moves and precision, how much materials it cuts off as it moves. There's also the spindle speed, but I've just been leaving it at the max 6,000 RPM. The precision setting is kind of the same as layer height in 3D printing. The smaller the number, the finer the end result. 
and the more time it takes to finish. So I figure out that a feed rate of uh, 200 millimeters per minute and a precision setting of 0.35 works pretty well. I'm sure there are charts and formulas for this, but I'm a trial and ever kind of girl, and that's why I've worked out. Under Aerial tab, we are going to select Custom Rectangular and set Graphically. Okay, Area of Current Operation looks about right. Okay, click OK. Okay, now if we click Calculate Tool Pass, we can see all the G code to see where the cutter will go. Looks good. Now we are going to export it by write NC program file and then load it into the GCO sender on the laptop attached to the engraver. Okay, this is our GCO sender. It's called Candle. I'm going to open our file. So today I learned how to engrave on the CNC machine and hopefully you have also. The noise is really pushing my luck in my little apartment and the dust is going to become a problem. So next time I'll have to do something about that. I would like to thank Desproto for letting me use their software. It really is a good package and it's great to be able to learn a program I know I'll always have on my computer rather than something in the cloud. Those services tend to come and go, you never know. I'll put the link in the description box. They do have a free demo for you to check out. I hope no one minds if my progress is a little slow and the results pretty simple. I'm actually not very technical, I'm just diligent. Ever since I was a little girl, I've been very good at one thing, throwing a huge amount of hours at a problem and never giving up. Now I do that with technical stuff. Then I get on camera and people think I'm skilled. Really, I'm not. It's just repetition and trial and error. In this CNC series, you'll get a better idea of just how slow my progress is. Please be patient because I think it's good for people to know that these things take time and not to give up just because most of us are never going to be as skilled as some of the experts on YouTube are. But so long as we work and study hard, we'll reach our goal in the end. Please like, subscribe, join, and share. Until next time, if I can do it, anyone can do it.